Hey what's up everybody, I'm back with some more mods for you today. Now if you're like me, you probably have a shameful amount of hours in Fallout 4. But have you ever wondered how much of that time has been wasted? For example, sitting in a loading screen or waiting for NPCs to stop talking. Like, I just want to sell you my junk, I don't need your whole life story. So this first mod is going to be fixing that problem, and that mod is quick trade. This mod is simply going to do what it says on the tin. With a simple click of a button you can open an NPC's trade menu rather than having to sit through their stupid dialogue for the millionth time. Now this isn't just going to work for your vendor NPCs, it's also going to work for your companions as well. And yes, just in case you're wondering, this will work if you're using some kind of multiple companion mod. This will also work with mods that add new companions. Now, speaking of companions, have you ever wondered how much health they had in a firefight? Whether they were close to dying or down? Well, from now on, you're not going to need to wonder because with this next mod I have for you, it's gonna make it clear as day. And that mod is, of course, Companion Status HUD. Now, not only is this mod going to display how much health all of your companions have, but it's also going to display how much AP they have and how many stim packs they have. And yes, just like the previous mod, if you're using some kind of multiple companion mod, this will work with it without any kind of setup. It will even work for temporary companions that join you for certain quests. Now, by default, the widget itself will be in the top right corner. To change this, simply enter the console commands from the mod page linked below. Right, now we've made it easier for you to access NPC's inventory, including companion inventory, and we've shown you how much health your companions have, I think we need to get a mod just for us. With the next mod we have FOV slider and height. Now the keen eyed viewers probably notice that my game looks a little bit different and that's because I actually run the game at a slightly higher FOV. Before I found this mod I was simply opening the console and changing the FOV manually every single time I launched the game which as you can imagine got very tedious very quickly. Now there is a downside to changing your FOV and that's the higher your FOV the further away your pit boy seems to be making it harder to see what's on it. That being said though, in my opinion, it does make the game look a lot nicer. Right, now we've eliminated the need to use the console, simply open up the MCM. Open the FOV slider tab and set your FOV to the desired amount. Personally, I like 95. It's not too much and it's not too little. Now, another reason why this mod is superior to simply changing your FOV with the console is that this mod will dynamically change the FOV. For example, accessing a terminal, the FOV is put back to default, making the terminal display as large as possible. Now, as well as affecting FOV, this mod is also supposed to affect your player height, but unfortunately, no matter how many times I tried, I just couldn't get it to work. But I'm sure it's just something that I'm doing wrong. Now for the next mod. Okay, imagine this. You go out adventuring, doing various quests, etc. Now, you're going to acquire a lot of junk. What are you going to do with that junk? Naturally, you just put it in a workbench, but then your workbench starts to look like this, a complete mess. So to fix this, we're going to get the mod Workshop Junk Grinder. Essentially, what this mod is going to do is take all of the junk items you found on your various adventures and condense it down into its base components. This is going to make your workbench inventory a lot tidier and make it significantly easier to find the components that you need. Now, when the machine has finished scrapping your junk, you'll hear a very noticeable Ding. Now how to craft it. Simply open up the workbench, go to power, manufacturing, machinery, and it'll be the second one along. Right, now you've crafted it, you're going to need to power it. To do this, simply attach it to a generator. It requires only two power. Unfortunately, however, you can't just attach a wire straight to the machine. You'll have to attach a conduit to the machine first. Now for this next mod, let me describe a situation to you. Have you ever wanted to do a Minuteman playthrough? No? Just me? Okay then. But let's say you did. This means that unfortunately you're going to have to have the Minuteman radio on at all times. But what if you don't want to put up with the music on there? Well, I have the solution. And that solution is Minuteman Radio Extended. Now, as a person that actually likes siding with the Minutemen, I find this mod very helpful. It lets me keep track of my settlements, but doesn't force me to listen to the music on the radio. Now, there are three options available for this mod. 
Version A will replace the vanilla 11 songs with 11 new songs. Version B is the one that I'm using, where you only get the Minutemen alerts. And finally, version C will replace all vanilla songs with 60 Minute Man. This is the mod author describes is only for those that are truly confident they won't go insane. Now, throughout all of this footage, I've had the Minuteman radio on, and you cannot hear any of the music. And just to prove that I do have it on, Now, a lot of the times, the guy on the radio won't be telling you about a settlement that's under attack. He simply just gives you an update. Now, of the three versions available, I have version B, and there are three separate downloads for version B, each one determining how often you'll receive an update. You have the choice between every 10 minutes, 5 minutes, and 2.5 and minutes. Here is another example of the guy on the radio. It's 5 a.m. This is Radio Freedom, voice of the Minutemen. Now, I know I'm probably the odd one out here doing Minuteman playthroughs. Most people are probably sick of Preston and how he marks your map with settlements every two minutes. But maybe if we can improve other aspects of doing a Minuteman playthrough, then maybe we might be able to tolerate Preston just a little bit more. Like, this game has four factions, and I want it to feel like that, not just disregarding Minutemen. And that brings us to the end of the video for today. And I just want to say, if you did get to this part of the video, I really appreciate it. Now don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you all in the next video.